Hi guys, Josh here with Speedueno, and a bit of fun in today's video, I'm going to be playing around with the Teensy 4.1 board and starting what is probably one of the fastest aftermarket ECUs ever made. Okay, so I want to preface this whole video by saying that this is mostly for a bit of fun, rather than being a strategic path for these boards or anything like that. So, what is the Teensy 4.1? Earlier this year, the, the Teensy 4.1 board was released as a big brother to the uh, smaller Teensy 4 that was released last year. It uses the same processor on the board, but shares the larger board form factor as the Teensy 3.5 and 3.6. The Teensy 4 had been a really interesting addition to the, the small board microprocessor market as it contained an incredibly fast uh, microprocessor but was a little bit limited in terms of, of onboard storage and I.O., uh, which made it uh, unsuitable for 4 speed Wino. So just how fast are we are we talking with the, the TNC4? Well, pretty damn fast is the answer. It has a, a 600 megahertz a microprocessor on it, which combined with a, a pretty wide array of, of auxiliary chips, uh, auxiliary circuits on this chip, in my opinion, really starts to, to blur the lines between a, a traditional microprocessor and what we see in a desktop processor. Certainly, it's, it's not a desktop processor, but is starting to, to just blur the lines a little bit, given the, the number of onboard peripherals that this chip has. If you're coming from a, a PC-based background, you might hear 600 megahertz and think, oh, that's relatively slow. But in the world of microprocessors and ECUs in particular, that's incredibly fast. For comparison, here's a, a benchmark of the Teensy 4 uh, and 4.1 versus the Teensy 3.5, a standard Arduino, and a couple of other uh, pretty common microprocessor boards. It's clear here that it's not just fast compared to older Arduinos and things, but it blows away most of the, the common microprocessors that are in this space and that had already been considered pretty quick. So the, the 4.1, however, became particularly useful for Speedwino by breaking out a lot more of the, the I.O. that the 4.0 didn't and adding a little bit more memory on the board. As it uses the, the same form factor as the, the TC 3.5, the board can physically fit straight into the Dropberry CU that I've shown previously. Uh, and for the most part is electrically compatible as well. There are a few limitations and around what's happened with the pins, the CAN pins have been moved. Uh, there's a lot fewer analog uh, inputs on the, the 4.1 versus the 3.5. But for the most part, it's a pretty compatible little board. All right, so all of this is pretty interesting. But what does it actually mean in the real world? Well, from a practical perspective for Speedwino, not an awful lot. The, the TNC 3.5 that the, the drop air board is designed around already provides all of the I.O., the memory, the timers, the, all of the things that we've needed, as well as having far, far more raw processing power than is really needed. It's about eight times as fast as the, the trusty old Mega 2560 and had the advantage of coming with a lot more timers. So even the, the Teensy 3.5 could do everything that was needed and, and more. But you don't automatically get an ECU, um, a, a better ECU, sorry, just because you, you stick a faster processor on it. Although in a lot of cases that there are people that are certainly using it in their spec sheets and, and in their marketing. But marketing and bragging rights can be a bit of fun. And given that the, the Teensy 4.1 board will simply drop straight in, uh, it seemed like a no brainer that I, I would get around to writing some support for it at some point. The multi-platform model that, that's used within the Speedwino firmware uh, makes this relatively straightforward to do, but it does require a lot of time studying the, the data sheet for the, the microprocessor, which in the case of the Teeny was, was a, a pretty daunting exercise given it's a, about a 4,000 page document. So a lot of time spent jumping around in there, but the work's all done now. So here it is, uh, a 600 megahertz ECU firing up for the first time just yesterday.
note that the loop timer here that you can see in Tuner Studio is about 25 times faster than with the old Mega 2560. So there it is, a 600 MHz ECU. Like I've said, this won't really change the intended um, strategic direction or the target board for the drop air at all, as there's still a few reasons I, I really do want to keep uh, using the 3.5. It's got a couple of little advantages. But it was a really interesting little experiment uh, and something that was, was pretty fun to write and really shows one of the advantages, I think, of, of using these plug-in processor boards for this type of application. As always, the, the code support for this will be added to the main Speedwino repo. So if it's something that you're interested in trying, you'll be able to just grab that code, compile up, and it'll go. I know there's a few mad keen uh, folk out there who will no doubt be, be grabbing this and designing boards around it in absolutely no time. So have at it. All right, guys, hope that was a bit of fun. Hope you all liked seeing what was a ridiculously fast ECU up and running just for a bit of fun. Uh, and stay tuned. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank you.